That's just one of a constant cavalcade of trucks shipping in the fuel, the food, the clothing, everything. Nothing grows here. Nothing grows here at Olympic Dam. Everything has to be shipped in. All the chemicals and all the food has to be trucked in. Let's try that again. 550 kilometres of bitumen to Adelaide. Nothing grows here in Roxby, so everything has to be shipped in. The food, the fuel, clothing, and the chemicals to extract the minerals from the mine. Then there's the return journey. All those trucks again bringing the minerals back. To Adelaide and to ports unknown. Fossil fuel friendly? What do you reckon? Australia, one of the driest continents on the planet. And as we become more aware of how precious water is, let's look at how BHP Billiton uses it out there at Olympic Dam. They guzzle up 35 million litres a day, free of charge, from the Great Artesian Basin. If the proposed expansion goes ahead, they want to extend that to 42 million litres a day. But even that won't be enough. So BHP Billiton, subsidised by the taxpayer, want to build a desalination plant at the sensitive Spencer Gulf and pipe the water in 350 kilometres to Olympic Dam. The proposed desal plant, according to Rupert Murdoch's own rag, the Adelaide Advertiser, would be the equivalent of putting 250,000 new cars on the road. How environmentally friendly is that? Currently, 10% of the state's electricity flows along these lines to Olympic Dam. If the proposed expansion goes ahead, this will jump to 25% of the state's electricity supply being consumed by Olympic Dam, which will make it impossible for South Australia to meet its emission targets by 2020. This looks pristine, but there's a hundred thousand litres of radioactive water leaking from that mine site over there every day and has been for many, many years. Where? We know not where. The Commonwealth Supervising Scientist, paid for by the taxpayer, says that it's going straight down. But there's nothing to say it won't make its way into the water table. Talking about the environment and you talk about it's been proven and we've got all these wonderful scientists that have said that nothing's gone into Kakadu. Well, we know why nothing's gone into Kakadu because the exclusion zone around the mine is large enough that it hasn't reached there yet. And that mine is young enough in age that it hasn't seeped that far yet, leaking in excess of 100,000 litres per day into the local water table. But the exclusion zone around the mine means that it hasn't got actually into Kakadu yet. So the scientist can put his hand on his heart and say it's wonderful. It hasn't got the kakadoo yet. I could go to a whole heap of your scientists and I could go to a whole heap of your acronyms. I just went to the place, mate, and it's not what you say it is. Yeah. Look, I'm not going to, I'm not going to um, uh, try and challenge every single point that you've made, um, and I suspect I couldn't change your opinion if I did. But let me just take up one point where you're wrong. Uh, um, 100,000 litres a day haven't leaked out of the National Park. ERA has not been fined for leaking 100,000 litres a day. Um, there, is, there, is a, there is no lateral seepage. The seepage is that way, not that way towards the National Park. Um, well, that's what happens with all, all tailings dams. So the, all, ta all tailings dams leak that way, not that way. So... Um, eventually, eventually. 
Oh. You go, I mean, there's the, 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 again, the question, the, the issue, I think, is where do you get the information from? Who do you believe here? You believe the supervising scientists, who incidentally do do their own studies. They don't get their information from the RA. They get some, but they have, they have had a vast array of, of hydrological flora and fauna and other kinds of studies over a generation now. So uh, uh, they, are, they are the best, to, best people to know this, and they say three things. No incident of lasting or more than moderate impact, uh, no, leakage, no leakage into Kakadu, no impact beyond the mine site. It's pulverized because you took it out and you broke up the rock, so it will move with the water and it will move down to the, the water table uh, and it will be dispersed wherever the water goes, into the rivers, into the um, swampy area, the wetlands. Um, it's, uh, you know, you, you can say it's out of sight, out of mind. But biologically, this whole planet is uh, a recycling planet. That's the way it works. And uh, we're alive today because of recycled material of th those animals and plants and people that lived on the Earth before us. And the trouble is we're putting poison into the recycler, uh, so future generations will have a harder time living on the Earth than we did. So we were not only hurting their health, corrupting the gene pool, but we're giving them more hazardous environment with which to cope and they're going to reach a point of no return.